Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna do another installment of Is It Full Bottle Worthy? I'm going to do a rapid review of 20 fragrances that are popular. Well, maybe some are more popular than others and maybe there are a few I've just been curious about and I have heard about here and there on YouTube, but perhaps they haven't been completely hyped up. So you'll hear some familiar ones and maybe ones that aren't as familiar, but we'll do 20 rapid reviews of samples that I have tried over the past few weeks give you my impressions. I have four categories for each fragrance. The first category is, is the fragrance mass appealing? Meaning, would most people that sniffed the fragrance think that it was at least pleasant? Yes, no, or maybe. Then I give you a quick review of my impressions of the fragrance. This is without knowing any of the notes or looking up the note structure at all. Just off the top of my head, what do I think I'm smelling? Then I share with you about the performance. Is it close to the skin or projecting? And what's the longevity like? And then the fourth category is that I give you my impressions impressions of whether I think the bottle is actually full bottle worthy. And that's regardless of whether or not I would personally buy it at the moment. And I'll share some thoughts around that. So I do have all of my notes that I've kept in a spreadsheet. So you'll see me looking down. We're going to start with Montau's Vanilla Cake, one that has been hyped up for smelling like cake. So is it mass appealing? I gave this a maybe. It really depends on if whether you're a gourmand lover or not. And the notes about what it smells like, I wrote down, shocker, cake. It smells like cake, like vanilla cake. It also smells woody. It has a prominent vanilla note in it. And it came across really warm for me. The performance on this one was moderate all around, moderate in projection, moderate in longevity. And I wrote in terms of full bottle worthy, yes, for a gourmand lover, but not for me. And I don't even remember why. So there must have been something rather forgettable about this fragrance that I didn't even remember why I wouldn't purchase a full bottle of it and it might just be because there's sort of a proliferation of these kinds of fragrances on the market gourmand fragrances that smell like dessert and cake which by the way I have a number of shelves dedicated strictly to gourmand fragrances or gourmand leaning kinds of fragrances so I'm certainly not opposed to another vanilla fragrance but for some reason this one just didn't strike my fancy Speaking of fragrances that did strike my fancy, I'll go to Javoy's Fire at Will. So let me say that I heard the beautiful Nika Marks here talking about it, and she got me so interested in this from her description that I ordered a sample. So is it mass appealing? I said yes in capital letters for vanilla lovers. So just like the Montal vanilla cake, you have to really be into gourmand and vanilla notes. So yes for those folks. I wrote down 100 Silent Ways. So there must be something about this fragrance that reminded me of 100 Silent Ways from Nishane. It's sugary. It's an airy vanilla sitting on a bed of thin musk. It is moderate all around in terms of projection and longevity. And is it full bottle work? The, I wrote the word absolutely, which means that it did something to me. It knocked my socks off in some form or fashion. It gave me all the feels in some way. So Fire at Will is officially on the desirable list. Next we go to one from a line that I have come to love, and that's the Carolina Herrera Confidential line. This is Mystery Tobacco, a fragrance that I have been looking at for the better part of a year and finally found on sale. So spoiler alert, I did purchase a full bottle of this after sampling. Is Mystery Tobacco full bottle worthy? I have in capital letters underscored and bolded, nope. <laughs> Notes about this, smells like decaying wood, dirty patchouli and rotten tobacco on the opening only, like the immediate opening. However, on the dry down, this becomes an elegant woody tobacco reminiscent of cigar bars, of old libraries that are paneled in wood with leather couches and distinguished gentlemen sipping on the finest liquors and smoking cigars. Really fantastic fragrance. It's long lasting and it has good projection. I had the nerve to write down in the full bottle worthy category, not now for me, because I have other tobacco scents that I want to reach for. And then I found it on sale and snatched it. Mystery Tobacco found a home here. I go next to Madison Avenue from one of my favorite houses, Bond Number no. 9. As a New Yorker, I love the bottles and I love the whole concept of naming these bottles after streets or neighborhoods in New York. I just think that's brilliant. 
Are all the scents brilliant? A lot of them are, but they aren't all hits. I've had a dud or two in the bunch, but I do like the ones that I have kept. I gave away, excuse me, I didn't give it away. I sold Jones Beach. So Madison Avenue, is it mass appealing? Yes. What does it smell like? I wrote down fruity, bright, grape candy powder and bubble gum and woodiness. My husband really loved this on me. So when I tried these fragrances, I would spray it on skin and on paper, sniff it, let it mellow out, and then have my husband sniff as well to get his impressions. He's a really tough crowd, so if he likes a fragrance, it definitely goes on the wish list, assuming that I also like it, of course. So would I purchase a bottle of Madison Avenue? Yes, not only because it was hubby approved. I really liked how bright and fresh and woody it was with the, the playfulness of like that bubblegum touch. So it was both mature yet flirty at the same time so Madison Avenue is a yes next I go to Christian Dior's Santal Noir a fragrance that is highly hyped and I think getting harder to find if I'm not mistaken is the fragrance mass appealing I would say no this is a scent profile for people that might consider themselves to have more mature noses or who have experienced quite a variety of fragrances and really understand both the Santal and the Noir part and how they play together in a fragrance what did I get out of this in terms of smell and I'm giggling at myself because I wrote down blast of Twizzlers blast of Twizzlers then it becomes deeply spicy and slightly sweet I got a little bit of an ooty thing going on overall I thought it was nice and woody and I found the fragrance to be very sexy and particularly unisex my husband liked it as well I could picture myself wearing it as well as him wearing it so this gets a yes in terms of being full bottle worthy and I almost forgot to mention that it's also moderate to long lasting all around. Some people report that this is an incredibly long lasting fragrance on me because my sense of smell is a little bit weaker. My perception may be a little different than others. It was moderate to long lasting, really lovely fragrance. Santal Noir, thumbs up. Next we go to Secret Trist, a recent, a more recent release rather from Fragrance Dubois. Mass appealing and I think it's a maybe on this one depending on who's trying it um, and I would say it would be more appealing for men than women. It leans slightly masculine. So my notes were that this fragrance is alluring, alluring at first, then it gets a bit stale. <laughs> I wrote the notes flat candied woodiness with jasmine touches and it's that stale part that's a real turn off for me and that happens sometimes with fragrances the opening is fabulous and as it settles down on your skin it just either doesn't mesh well with you or it just kind of goes a little bit to the I don't know like boring flat stale side so that's what happened with this fragrance on me hold your tomatoes don't throw rocks. I know some of you really love Secret Trist. Just my experience with just a sample, by the way. Before I give you my final thoughts on this, remember, a sample is just a sample. So they come like this. That's all you get. I try to order from places that don't give you the little annoying dabbers but sometimes that's all I can find because it's really hard you almost have to douse yourself in the dabber to get a real sense of the fragrance um, I prefer those that are in a little spray but remember this has been decanted from its original bottle source if you will and who knows what happens in terms of its exposure to air all of those kinds of things and how it plays on your skin but so anyway that's my little disclaimer this is moderate all around in terms of projection and longevity and i gave it a no for me in terms of being full bottle worthy because like i said it just transforms from something alluring at first to something really lackluster in the dry down at least my experience Next, we go to a controversial fragrance from Zerzhov. It's called Picovaya Dama, one of the more expensive fragrances in the Zerzhov lineup. I do not think that this is a mass appealing fragrance at all. I think very few people would really enjoy this. I describe it as a really clean but super strong aldehydic fragrance with a lot of musk. It's soap on steroids with that zesty zing plus perfumey generic smell. It reminded me a little bit of white linen and I'm talking about the OG, the original formula from the 80s. This is a fragrance that was very long lasting and projecting all around. Now, in terms of being full bottle worthy, 
<laughs> I would say for myself, this is an absolute yes. I found it to be beautifully done, but I can see how this fragrance is incredibly off-putting to many people, especially if you are not a fan of super clean smelling aldehydic fragrances. But this is, in my opinion, an incredibly elegant, beautiful fragrance that makes you feel like you're doing something special with your life when you spray this on. I mean, it's it just gives you that that thing, that special aura. So I have this on a wish list. I got to watch the prices on this because it tends to stay on the higher end and it's going to need to go down in price before Veronica gets a bottle. So you have to be like super self-confident and not afraid of what other people think to pull off a fragrance like Pico Valle Dama. And I would suggest if you buy this to spray lightly, a little bit goes a long way. It fills up a room really quickly. I found it to just be elegant, sophisticated, confident, owning the room, kind of a clean, fresh, beautiful, musky smell. Let's move on then to another bond number nine. This one is called Gold Coast and I've been curious about it. I do think that this is, yes, a mass appealing fragrance. This is, speaking of clean scent, another laundry clean musk woody fragrance with a distant fruit and sandalwood in the background. There are some hints of sweetness. I found this to be a very interesting fragrance, not a profile that I come across, you know, frequently. It felt unique to me and it is moderate to long lasting all around. In terms of it being full bottle worthy, I would say yes. This one was elegant in a clean and woody way and I really liked it a lot, husband liked it also. Next we come to <laughs> a newer release from Creed. I happen to find the House of Creed to be rather overpriced a lot for what you get. There's a lot of controversy behind the history of the house. I won't get into all of that here. You know, I don't know how I feel about all that stuff, but Windflower is the name of the fragrance. Beautiful bottle, looks really appealing. Is it mass appealing? I would say yes, that it is. However, I found it to be a forgettable woody floral with violet touches. I would say instead of this, get something like La Via Belle We instead. I found the price of this fragrance to be insane for how generic the fragrance is. Is it nice? Yes. Do we need to be paying, you know, upwards of three and four hundred dollars for a fragrance like this? No way. There's other fragrances on the market that give you the same feel and you can get for a quarter of the price. So come on, Creed. In terms of it being full bottle worthy, I just wrote not really. Moving along. Next, we come to Christian Dior's Eden Rock, a fragrance that I have been interested in, have heard lovely reviews about. I do think this is a very mass appealing fragrance. It's light, it's bright, it's slightly masculine. I got something along the lines of eucalyptus with some sweetness, that kind of vibe together. I found it to be good. I don't have any complaints about this fragrance, but I have to admit that it felt rather unremarkable for me, especially for the price tag. And the performance was moderate to a little bit weak all around. So in my opinion, this is not a full bottle worthy fragrance at the price tag that it is. If it was at a different price tag, it's something that you know I would certainly consider adding to the collection as a lovely summer fragrance, spring and summer fragrance. Next is Ormond Jane Woman, one that has been recommended to me a lot in the comments section. So thanks to all of you for the recommendations that you drop in the comments. I do take them seriously. I do go check them out online. And if they sound appealing, I order a sample like this. So this is a fragrance in terms of it being mass appealing. I wrote down the word maybe, and I'm not sure why I wrote down maybe at first. This is the thing about fragrance. Again, like first of all, it's hard to test off of a sample. So you do your best with that. And then second, Sometimes you need to come back to a fragrance two or three times to really get an understanding of it and how you feel about it before you make a decision about whether it makes sense for you or not in some cases. So I have to revise that even though it says maybe on my spreadsheet, I'm going to give it a yes because I tried it again last night. This fragrance to me comes across slightly powdery. It's a green and white uh, floral with some green touches to it. I found this to be a very clean smell, bright, uplifting, and has some sweet, gentle undertones to it. It was moderate to long lasting all around in terms of longevity, as well as moderate projection. And I do think that this is full bottle worthy. It will go on the wish list for something to consider for the future. So yes to Ormond Jane woman, and thanks to all of you for the recommendation here. So we come to another recent Fragrance Dubois release, Cavort. 
So this has gotten tons and tons of hype all over YouTube. And I don't think that it is mass appealing. However, I do think that it's absolutely full bottle worthy. However, <laughs> I wrote down skin scented, not because it is a skin scent, but rather because it reminds me of the smell of skin, particularly masculine skin. However, I also wrote down that it's clean, a clean sprightly leather with <laughs> soft, lacy, feminine edges. Let me think about why and how I wrote that. A clean, sprightly leather with soft, feminine, lacy edges. And I also wrote down, I've smelled this before with an exclamation point, and I cannot figure out what it is. It's some warm and spicy and rose kind of fragrance with woody and leathery notes. And it's driving me crazy. And I'm probably going to figure it out at some 3 a.m. you know, hour of a morning in like a month. I'm going to wake up and go, oh, that's what it reminds me of. This is moderate to long lasting all around. Yes, full bottle worthy, a really, really beautiful fragrance. Again, the fragrance Dubois prices are a little bit on the high end for my particular taste. But if this ever went on sale, I would consider a bottle of this. So then we go to the super duper hyped up Hallie. Some people say Haley, Halley. There's two L's, so I'm going to go with Halley. I might be wrong. From Tiziano Terenzi. I don't think this is a mass appealing fragrance. So there's something about the opening of this that I think could be off-putting. I wrote here, I've smelled this before, again, with an exclamation point. This is a very familiar scent, and I can't put my finger on exactly what it smells like. My notes are that it's an oody, peachy fragrance with some woodiness. There's a rose, and I found it to be a very musky scent. The bottle on this is spectacular. Incredibly expensive fragrance. However, on occasion, I will see it pop up on sale and that might be when it's worth getting. This is a strong fragrance all around. In terms of being full bottle worthy, I would say yes. However, not for me, particularly because I have something like this somewhere in my collection, even though I can't figure out what it is. But the bottle's gorgeous. The fragrance is lovely. If you like an oody, like fruity peach, like peachy kind of fragrance with woodiness and musk. Next, we come to one from Paris Monte Carlo that I nearly bought a number of times. It's Vanille de Tahiti, also has been hyped up as a really gorgeous vanilla fragrance. I do not think that this is a mass appealing fragrance, I have to say. <laughs> this fragrance, I had super high hopes for it. Now, imagine if I had purchased this fragrance. I had a similar experience with another fragrance from this house, Jasmine de Pays. Do you remember that review? I ended up selling that to a beautiful soul who saw the video and wanted to purchase that anyway, regardless of the description that I had. So whoever you are out there, I hope that you are loving that fragrance and that it's treating you well. It didn't treat me well. Uh, and this fragrance here, Vanita Tahiti, also did not treat me well. I think the opening of this, I wrote down, it's a bit rotten halitosis-ish. Now, while that part of the fragrance mostly goes away in the dry down, I have to say that the ghost of that like deep, rotten, bad breath thing remains. And I'm talking about not stale breath. There's such a thing as stale breath when you haven't had a chance to open your mouth all day or drink water and it's just it just smells a little dusty and stale. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the deep halitosis that comes when you have digestive problems. And I'm so sorry if there's anyone out there that does, but that is what comes to mind. I wrote down indolic vanilla. Indolic, like in the jasmine sense. I don't know if there is a floral in here that smells like it is on its deathbed, but it stays, it lingers, like the memory, the muscle memory, <laughs> the scent memory of the poopy halitosis stays as like a shadow through the back end of the fragrance and it kind of hurts my feelings because i really want to love this <laughs> this is moderate all around in terms of longevity and projection and is it full bottle worthy do i have to say absolutely no i will say there's a couple fragrances that have a little bit of a poopy thing going on that i can tolerate so Alien Oud Magisto is one of those. It has a barn yardy oody kind of opening that settles down and then I can deal with that. I can tolerate it, but this one, 
I don't want a trail of bad breath and poopy smell behind me. I mean, we have enough things that we need to battle in our lives. Do we need our fragrance doing that to us? Mm -mm. Next is Blue Turquoise from uh, Giorgio Armani, the Privé line. This was a really interesting fragrance. I don't think that it's mass appealing. And I wrote down Green Apple Jolly Rancher. Who remembers those? Oh, it's a very, very distinct taste. And the taste also evokes a smell. Well, the, the, the candy itself has a smell, right? So together they work in concert to give you both a scent and taste experience. A Green Apple Jolly Rancher mixed <laughs> with blue Kool-Aid powder. Plus, how many of y'all had Sucret drops or still use Sucrets? Sucret, Sucret, Sucret drops when your throat is hurting, like you have a sore throat. The feeling that a Sucret drop gives you and the smell that wafts up into your nose as you are, as you have the Sucret drop in your mouth, the combination of that with the Jolly Rancher and the Kool-Aid powder is kind of what comes to mind for me when I spray this. I actually found it incredibly interesting and super refreshing. That's the word that I wrote down for this fragrance. So uh, it is moderate to long lasting. I don't know that this fragrance is for me, at least not right now, or perhaps I need to revisit this next summer when it gets hot again. Love the bottle of the Privé line. It's a beautiful shape and I love what they do with the colors and the marbling and all of that. And I love the name Blue Turquoise. So right now I'm just gonna say, <clears throat> excuse me, no, not for me in terms of a full bottle. However, if you're into really interesting fragrances that don't smell like anything else, give this one a try and I'll probably revisit it next summer, as I said. Next, we come to Bouquet Ideal from Zerzhov. And people say that different ways, so I'm just going to go with that for now. Is this a mass appealing fragrance? I'm going to say no. And the reason why is the spiciness and the woodiness of this. I found this to be mostly like a vanilla forward fragrance with spices that are pretty subtle. It was a subtle fragrance overall and some woodiness to it. The projection and longevity are moderate all, all around. And in terms of whether it's full bottle worthy, I wrote down no, uh, that it's unremarkable, particularly for the price. Is it a nice, pleasant fragrance? Absolutely. The bottle's lovely, but there are other fragrances on the market that give you the same vibe as Bouquet Ideal. So in that sense, it's not unique enough to justify or command the price, but lovely fragrance for sure. Speaking of unremarkable fragrances, again, this is my opinion, Bois Doré from Van Cleef and Arpels. Most of the experiences that I have had with this line of fragrances have been the same. They are generally lovely on the opening, but they stay so soft and so subtle on the skin. And in many cases, they're so fleeting that I have a hard time really enjoying them. Like I need more body in my fragrances. So I don't think that this is a mass appealing fragrance. It's woody and a little bit powdery, uh, but what stands out to me is that it has that like baby doll plastic, you know, head thing going on, like that kind of same smell that's in Hypnotic Poison and others that have vanilla and then some others that have woodiness and then they have that, just that really subtle like plastic thing going on that can make it hard to enjoy for people that are sensitive to that smell. So this was like weak to moderate all around in terms of projection and longevity. And I don't think this is full bottle worthy for the price. I found it, like I said, a little bit unremarkable uh, for the price tag. I'm gonna go next to a fragrance that I've been super curious about probably for a couple of years. And I think I may have even sampled this last year and forgotten that I did, but I sampled it again. And it's Coco Bello from James Healy. I don't know what it is about this fragrance that I thought I was gonna love, but I, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> No, it's not a mass appealing fragrance. The opening of this fragrance is a huge love for me. I don't think this is mass appealing, like I said, but it's this green, creamy coconut and sandalwood in the opening. It has a pretty woody dry down. The opening part of it reminds me of Tiziana Terenzi Vele or Vili, however you say that, with the greenness and the coconut together. It's, it's remarkable. Speaking of unremarkable and remarkable, the opening of this is remarkable. I would love for the opening to stay through the body of the fragrance much longer. The body of it is nice as well. So it does lean masculine. I found this to be moderate all around. And in terms of being full bottle worthy, for me, I'm gonna say it's a yes. Although not right now, I have plenty of fragrances for this summer, next summer, and probably the next 20 summers of my life. <laughs> 
God willing that I live that long. But this uh, may be a purchase for next summer or maybe even the summer after that. Quite nice. Next, I go to Over the Chocolate Shop from 4160 Tuesdays, London, a fragrance I've heard about for quite a while as a spectacular chocolate fragrance. So is it mass appealing? I'm going to say yes. However, it has to be someone who is a chocolate lover. This is a dark chocolate rich opening. It has a dark coffee like in the far background. The problem for me with this fragrance is that it dries down into something really subtle that just doesn't capture my attention. I found this to be too soft all around as a fragrance. With chocolate, I do want it to be something that's noticeable on me. So in terms of being full bottle worthy, I'm going to say no. I found this fragrance to be not remarkable in the genre of gourmand fragrances and particularly in the universe of chocolate fragrances there are other better choices check out my chocolate fragrance video for some ideas all right then there's one that i have thought about purchasing a full bottle of i'm glad that i sampled first i do still think it's lovely but i have some caveats and it's velvet tonka from bdk is it mass appealing yes absolutely this smelled to me like almond cookie with marzipan dripping on top of the cookie. There's heavy tonka, this sweetness. It's very sexy and playful in the opening of the fragrance. However, the fragrance in the dry down for me gets a little bit plasticky in a way that I, I don't know that I need a full bottle of this or that I would run out to get it. One that I would certainly sample again because the opening is so delicious. It's one that I want to give probably five tries before <laughs> I officially give up on Velvet Tonka. It's soft all around uh, as a fragrance. It didn't have huge projection or longevity. It's not full bottle worthy right now for the reasons that I stated, but that opening of Velvet Tonka is captivating and fabulous. So I will give this some more tries. So that wraps up the 20 fragrances I wanted to do quick reviews on for this Is It Full Bottle Worthy? My Opinion on Popular Fragrances installment. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know that some of you really love some of the fragrances that I've mentioned that I don't, and that's totally okay, and vice versa. Maybe there were some fragrances I said yes to that others would absolutely turn their nose up at, and it's all good. These are just opinions about some smelly water in a bottle. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one, my friends. Take care.